tonight and uh, I went to go carry it over to download it and it just went away. Don't know what happened. So anyway, so I wanted to share with y'all some things about hostess coaching because I think that is the key for us to be able to, like Marie had a problem, you know, she's had a problem being able to uh, keep everybody engaged to listen to her. And I think that hostess coaching can help that also. You know, letting her know what's going to take place in the party and uh, what's going to, uh, you know, just so that she knows, so that she can help you also. Our goal is to help her with as much, to get as much free stuff as possible. But uh, our goal is to educate her about what we expect as well and how we expect the party to flow. But I have a message from Angie Schmidt. She sent it to me in text and I couldn't send it to the computer to do. So I'm going to, I'm going to play her message. And hopefully y'all can hear what she has to say. So let me know if y'all can't hear it. Just wave at me if y'all can't hear it. Hey, you all, I'm Team Mad. It's Angie Schmidt, Senior Manager from St. Louis, Missouri. And just wanted to come to you today with a couple of really quick hostess coaching tips that hopefully will help you fill those calendars and increase those party sales and just go back to having fun with your business. So the first thing that I set the expectation right from the beginning when we booked the party is we're business partners. I think that is so important. Um, I actually send out a postcard that thanks them right off the bat, and this goes in the mail the very next morning. And here's what's the most important thing that's made a difference with my cancellations is there's a line on there that says, I am 100% committed to your party, and I do expect the same as it worded. I am 100% committed to the date and time you have selected and greatly appreciate the same on your end. This is my livelihood and I love my job. I started doing this about three or four years ago and it really lets them know that I take this seriously. This is my job. This is my only job. This is what pays the bills. So I set the expectation right up front that we're business partners and it's all about having fun. Fun, fun, fun. I also have a checklist that I use that I will um, send so you guys can use it. It is my Bible for host coaching. It reminds me of every single thing that I need to do, and it's staying in communication. So my, my two biggest tips right now for you guys are set the expectation right up front that your business partners with your host, and you are doing this to get them as much free chocolate and to have fun with their friends and family as possible. I mean, it's all about them. We help them. In turn, it helps us. Um, sending out that postcard or sending some little handwritten note, or even if it's a text message that you send to them saying that I am so super excited about you scheduling your party. And then the last thing is, is following that checklist that I have. Um, it may work for you. It may not. But using that checklist as my Bible, your Bible, to make sure that you have covered everything and staying in constant communication. I think I have three or four checkpoints that I text, email, phone call with them and just make sure that it's all about keeping them engaged and excited. So hopefully this helps and you all have a great day and an amazing week. Talk to you soon. Bye. Okay. So I, uh, I have several documents and I'm going to uh, post them in the uh, target team group that uh, people have shared with me. So I, uh, well, I'll show you the first one, and I think that we have it somewhere on Team Mad already, but uh, I'm gonna, the one that Dina has made, and I actually use this, uh, this form here for, uh, for my hostess packets. You know, just whenever I hand the hostess uh, the, uh, her packet at the party and I set the date, and I just, it, and I go over the party checklist with the host and let her know all about the different things that we, uh, that we have highlighted here and, uh, you know, make a product, product list, you know, we'll work together to get your, uh, the guest sales where you want it to be. So I let them know right there, then and there that I'm working for what she wants, you know, so I ask for her wish list so that I know what, where, what our target goal is. But uh, Dina made this sheet, and I, I love it. And what I really like about it is she has the host rewards down there. And I go over that with my host, too, right when we set the uh, date. And then on the back, she has her uh, the top 40 list. And then her wish list at the bottom. So I use this right here 
uh, in my packets to help with hostess coaching from the get-go. So uh, I'm going to put that on there. And whatever documents and tools work for you, use it. You know, you might use a little bit from this and a little bit from that. I'm going to show you what Angie's, uh, her checklist looks like. And it's a lot. But what she does is she prints hers out. And she um, she attaches it. She has a folder for every one of her hostesses. And so she attaches it. And, you know, she has the hostess packet information. But the very top part is all the cut, the hostess information. She has the menu, a little box for the menu, a, a box for the groceries that's going to be needed. She, she even puts the tax rate on there so that whenever she gets to the party, she knows exactly what that tax is going to be for that particular location. But now it's really hard for us to really know exactly what the tax is if they're in a different location. So what I have done, I've started doing since uh, the orders get shipped directly to the customer now, is I let them know, especially if they're paying with a credit card, if it might be off, you know, 10 cents here, 20 cents there. If it is off, I will let them know. And I do. And, you know, I, I said, if it's over, I'll call you first. If it's under, I will just adjust it on your credit card. So uh, you know, that's what I say at checkout, just to let them know that I'm there. If there's something different, I will let them know. They might be saving some, you know, a few cents here and there. But, um, on on her little sheet here, it's you know she has a place for the hostess packet. That's the first thing that she does. The first step that she does, the hostess packet, she, what she has in it, her catalogs, order forms, and so on and so forth. And she also has a tic tac toe scavenger hunt that she puts in her packet as well. So, uh, and then uh, the first call, she uh, does 24 to 48 hours after she books. And, you know, she does, she goes over about inviting and over invite, explains the importance of personal invites and reminders. And it just gives you a list of the things that she really talks about every time she calls somebody and has that connection with them. Um, and then she, uh, the one week prior to the tasting, she goes and talks about the different forms of payment. Now we accept them all. So there's, she uh, probably needs to, well, uh, we can update this. It's, uh, we can edit it. But uh, I'll put this document out there too for us to be able to use. You know, and she, even on the second call, she reminds them about that tic-tac-toe tic uh, scavenger hunt for them as well. You know, just little things to remind them. And she, what, what is a tic-tac-toe scavenger hunt? It's a little uh, sheet that there's, uh, whenever you make tic-tac-toe, you get an extra prize. So that and that's what Angie's team uses. So uh, I'm going to show you all that, the next document that I show you. But uh, okay. on, the, uh, on the second call that she does, she also tells them, you know, she, she's setting the expectations again. She goes over their menus and the groceries, and she discusses the, uh, the location, where they're going to be set up at. And I think this is a great one. She, t she lets the hostess know this is sampling only. It's not catering. You know, they're just going to be taste testing these things. It's not going to be, you know, a, a smorgasbord for them. So, uh, you know, because a lot of people think that you're going to come in and you're going to prepare a whole meal. My last hostess thought that too. She thought that we were going to, we did do beef stroganoff, but I cut the, uh, the menu down in the half of it. I said, unless you want to buy the whole bottle of masala sauce. You know, because that, that doesn't benefit us. If it's, I mean, this is our business. This comes out of our pocket. So, uh, right. so just setting the expectations. You know, uh, Angie said that a lot in her uh, talk. And the other, uh, the other senior manager that I got information from to share with you tonight was Mary McCallum. And she also talks about setting the expectations. You know, I, I think that that's critical in our hostess coaching so that she knows what I'm expecting and I know what she's expecting. So that we, uh, that communication. So don't just assume, even if they have a direct sales business, do not just assume that they know everything. Bingo. And usually the ones that have direct sales businesses that are hostesses, they're usually my worst parties. I don't know if y'all have had that same experience, yes. but yes. it's because that they just really don't, give their put their whole heart into it so um and that's why you know whenever i people ask me to do parties i'm like i i will do a catalog party for you or something like that but i invite people to my home all the time that they get burned out and i don't want you to come over here and waste your time and only have two or three people show up because 
they're always coming here. So I, you know, I will do it or I'll help somebody collect orders or something like that. And because I want to be all in if I'm going to help somebody. But um, the next thing that she talks about is that, uh, you know, she recommends no children at the show. And I, I do the same thing because nine times out of 10, just like when we do events, I don't know about y'all, but whenever I do an event and kids come to my table, it drives me wild. Ask Dina. Yep. <laughs> if I had a, a cow prod for every kid that came by, I'd probably use it. Especially the ones that think that it's a smorgasbord. You know, uh, I've had to tell a couple of kids, you know what, don't come back to the table unless your parents are with you. And, you know, just to, uh, and that's the same thing with our home parties because, it, you know, this is really about adults for the most part. And so uh, the third section of her, her uh, form is that her third call is within uh, 24 to 48 hours. Wait. The expectations and the final commissions and just uh, going over the excitement and uh, confirming everything with, uh, within 24 to 48 hours before her party. So that's what that is about. She gets directions. I mean, this little checklist is great. Print, I encourage you to just print it out and look at it and then go back and say, oh, well, I don't need that part in there. I don't need this part. And then you can edit it to what you like. But this gives you a really great uh, tool to use to, to start with if you're having a problem with hostess coaching. It keeps you on track. It reminds you of the things to say and talk about. So uh, I highly recommend printing it off whenever I uh, put it in the group. And that way you can see it firsthand for yourself. I mean, how many of y'all have a sheet like this that you use? Not that comprehensive. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it, it might have a lot of stuff in there, but when you really look at it, it in sections for the first call, the second call, it's really not that much. And it really helps you to not forget. I don't know about y'all, but I forget everything. So this yes. is a great tool. So I, I actually printed it out and I stapled it to my, uh, to my folder for my party that I have as soon as we get back from uh, leadership. So that's, an, that's another document. And then I'm going to share with y'all um, her tic-tac-toe. Let me find it. Here it is. So here's her tic-tac-toe hostess uh, form that she puts in her packets. And she says, the rules are easy, the prizes are fun goodies. How many additional gifts will you earn? So this, this right here, this is all about really getting your hostess engaged and knowing that she's really working that party. You know, like my uh, hostess that I have uh, two days after we get back from uh, New Jersey, she is so excited. I mean, she, I stopped by her office today and she's like, I cannot wait," she said. And since the uh, since the customer special could be one of those martinis, I think we should try two of them. I said, "Okay, I can do that." I said, "It's now it's just sample." She goes, "No," she said. My goal is to sell enough that at least fifteen people get a bottle of that martini mix. So she already has her goal that she wants fifteen people buying seventy five dollars worth. She's a doctor's wife, so she is very uh, straightforward. So uh, I, I can't wait to see where this party's going to end up at. But just her tic-tac-toe sheet here is, have at least 12 buying guests at your party. Uh, electronically invite at least 30 plus guests. You know, if you do the Margo, then you can do that there. Uh, you know, the other ones have $200 in outside orders before I arrive. And so uh, one of the things that I've seen Angie do is she'll put that on her Facebook events that they do for each of their hostess parties and like, okay, Charlotte needs $200 in outside orders. So everybody that can't come, Make sure you turn in your orders before a party so she can cross off one of the areas on her tic-tac-toe sheet. So, uh, you know, so she drops that seed because she is all in it for the hostess. So that is a great tool for you to use to help boost your sales, but also to let your hostess know that she really is wanting me to get as much stuff as I possibly can. So it's a partnership. So uh, the next box was confirm one booking before she before uh, the hostess or the consultant arrives. Uh, the next one, participate in a Cocoa Chat to learn more about our amazing opportunity. The next one is close your party on the same date 
as we ha have the tasting. So that really will also get her uh, making sure she collects all those outside orders. Uh, the, ne the next one's close out a party of $500. The next one is hold your party on the original date scheduled. That is a great one. That means that you won't have any of those cancellations or moving around or shifting. You know, uh, so whenever you're giving your hostess packet out, make sure you pull out this tic-tac-toe sheet and say, hey, you want some more free groceries? Here, here you go. Uh, the, and the last one is have three guests, adult guests and attendants that I have never met before. So there's a lot of ways for her to earn uh, additional product here. And so what she does is uh, for one tic-tac-toe, she gives one, one bonus gift. For two tic tac toes, she gives two, and for three, she gives three gifts. She uh, get all of them covered by completing the entire card, and you'll get twenty-five dollars for the free product. So uh, just think about it. You know, if it's something maybe that you got some of your free, if you get free or half price items, and you turn it into twenty-five dollars worth of product that you can give them. But just think, if she did, really did cover all of those X's. So what if you had to give up something that you maybe got for free or something that you got for half price? Look how much more work she's going for and doing for you. That's my thought process. Give a little and get a lot back. So, uh, you know, how far do we want to take our business? How big do we want it to grow? So this is another great tool for you to use, and I'll share that one also. And then uh, there's another sheet. At, uh, Sorry, y'all, I didn't mean to stop the video. Um, I'm getting so excited to share all this stuff with y'all. No. Here's another uh, form that she uses that she puts in the hostess packet. And it's, can y'all see that? Wish list. Oh, no, that's the wrong one. Duh. Okay, let's, let's see. Hostess scavenger hunt. She puts this in the hostess packet also, the hostess scavenger hunt. Here is a list of 30 different kinds of people. If you are able to get 12 of them at your party, I will have a special gift just for you. Good luck and happy hunting. So this is another great one. So whenever your hostess says that she doesn't know anybody or she gives you all these, I don't have a lot of friends or whatever, find me a redhead, get them in attendance, find a pregnant person, get them in attendance. A guest who works in the service industry, get them in attendance. One of your neighbors, a former neighbor, a grandmother, someone with all sons, someone with all daughters. All, I mean, this is really going to trigger her to start thinking about who am I going to invite? And this is really going to help her to really build the attendance for the party. So this is another great hostess coaching tool to help keep your hostess engaged and to get her excited. Like, who do you know, you know? And so whatever the gift is, just something, you know, little for her to, maybe it's uh, your favorite recipes in a little, that you put together in a little book, whatever it is, you know, uh, just think outside of the box is something that you can do. But just think of if she had all these people at your party, you know, that how fun that would be. So that's another great tool. And I can't wait to post that one because I think everybody's going to love it. Mm -hmm. I like that one. Yeah, I like that? Yeah, I do. Okay, let's see. I have one more. And this is from Mary McCallum. Uh, this is her tools, her, her tips for us for uh, hostess coaching. And here she goes. She says, she said, I keep the communications open with them as much as I can. She does at least five touch points because we are partnering together to make her party a success. The first touch point is she starts hostess coaching at the time of the booking. And you know, that's really where it all begins. She, she sets her expectations and uh, she said she's, she'll let them know when she'll be reaching out as well as the best communication method. And I've been doing that a lot, asking them, you know, do you text, do you Facebook? What is the best way? It, calling is okay. And a lot of people are like, you know what? I can't talk on the phone during the day because I'm at work. But you know what? I can respond to text messages. So I have found that most of my hostesses, they're texting me or they're Facebook messaging me. So uh, that's, a, you know, make sure that you find out which, what's the best way to communicate with them. Number two, right after the booking, thank the uh, host for setting the date. 
And in Angie's little video that she sent to me, she has a little postcard that she sends out as soon as they book their party. So I'll ask her if she can uh, put a copy of her uh, postcard or send me a copy of it and I'll post it on our uh, team page. Uh, so uh, she thanks them for setting the date and then she gives them a couple of reminders and instructions to get their guest list to her. Because uh, I think Mary goes through the Margot system with them. So number three, she is specific about the uh, guest list. If she hasn't gotten it to them or wait, number three is specifically about the guest list. If she hasn't gotten it to me or is she, is she bleh, or if she has, then we set a menu. So she waits for them to get the guest list and then she sets the menu is what she's saying. Number four is what I call damage control in case things aren't going how she had anticipated so I can be her confidence in remaining reminding her about outside orders and extra guests. So this one here, you know, if the host is like, oh my gosh, I only have five people coming. Well, you know what, let's, who, who isn't coming? Let's talk about those people and uh, how we can engage them in getting their orders. And if you're using the tic-tac-toe form, you can actually post that if you do event pages. I do event page on Facebook for every party that I have. I set it up for my host. I add her as the co-host and I post in her event all the time, things that we're gonna be having at her party, uh, who's bringing a friend so that we know how much food to prepare and so on and so forth. So, uh, and then number five, she contacts her two days before the party. She said, I have her personally reach out to each guest as a reminder, and I tell her to have her message me uh, the, at the end with yeses or noes. And can I, um, can I put your name on, on a martini sample? That's a great one right there. Uh, whenever she is reaching out to her guests for reminders, she's like, she says, can I put your name on a martini sample? So I'm reserving a martini sample just for you. So that's a great way to, for them to really see if their uh, friends are coming or not. So the other tip is to keep in mind that you are the expert, regardless of how much experience you have, you have the training and the knowledge of what to do. So don't be shy to tell them as a business partner, partner what they need to do to make it a successful party. That goes back to what I just said about uh, whenever we book parties with consultants from other companies you know they are looking for you to take the lead so make sure that you work this like you want it to be a thousand dollar party or two thousand dollar party but it's going to be the best party ever and you know don't slack in any of those categories because when we slack that's whenever our parties aren't so great i don't know if any of y'all have noticed that but i know that whenever i'm not doing what i really should be doing or maybe i just had a bad week and I slacked on my hostess coaching. I didn't make those final calls or I didn't make that extra call. It seems like my parties just aren't as great because I didn't put as much enthusiasm and work into it. Has anybody experienced that? No. Yeah. So uh, that's some of the tips that I have for y'all for hostess coaching. Uh, my, my biggest thing really is just to keep it fun and exciting. And one of the things that I started asking my hostess, I said, okay, now I want you to do me a favor, take 30 minutes, flip through the book, and this is, this is your catalog. You can put your name on it with a Sharpie marker, and I want you to circle everything that is your favorite. I said, and there's your wish list. I said, then we can narrow it down if we need to. I said, but if you uh, circle the whole book, then that means that you have an, a, a, an addiction problem and that you may need to become a curator. And you know, I'm like, and so I make it fun and I joke with her and she starts laughing. She's like, well, I'm already addicted. Well, like the one today, she's like, I, I want everything. So, you know, and I also tell her, I'm like, okay, if there's one thing that you could pick out of the entire catalog that you haven't sampled yet, I said, let me know what that is so that I can incorporate it in a menu for you. So, uh, you know, that's one of the things that now, I said, if I, and I always do say, if I have it on hand. So make sure that you cover yourself by saying something like that. So, um, but I, I try to get her uh, to have something at her party that I know she's going to be excited about because what's going to happen is her excitement is going to fuel over to everybody else. Just like that chocolate, uh, three layer chocolate cake that's in the catalog. I made that for my last party, but I did it. I did chocolate cupcakes and I cut them in half and I put the uh, filling on in the middle 
and I drizzled the uh, chocolate um, sauce over the top. And I did the, uh, we did pistachios and uh, a raspberry on top. Do you, I think that seven people bought the chocolate cake mix and they bought the buttercream frosting and the chocolate sauce. And that was just by making the cupcakes and cutting them in half and making it a little abbreviated looking uh, cake for the, uh, so that's how I sampled it. But she was excited about that cake. And so she got everybody else excited about it. And whenever she uh, turned her order in, she used all four of her half price items on the baking sets. <laughs> that's how much she liked that. So wh whenever I host this coach and I ask them, what are you excited about? What, you know, some of them might be excited about the martini. So we, they might be having a chocolate and wine party, but we will take it to, you know, I'll say, okay, well, we can do a sample of martinis if you want to, if you want to provide the vodka. And, you know, they're like, oh, heck yeah, that means I'm going to get more stuff free. And they'll do it. So, you know, and I bring my little shot glasses or the little cups that we had from orig the original days and, uh, or I'll go to Dollar Tree and get some. But uh, just to let her know, it's just a sample of it. They're not going to get a six ounce drink. So, uh, you know, it's all about letting her know exactly how the party's going to flow, what your expect expectations are, that you're partnering with her and that you're going to make this the, the most fun that she's ever had. Her friends are going to love her for uh, having this kind of party. So uh, I wanted to tell you real quick, one of the parties that I offered today at my networking group was a wind down party. I said, y'all, I said, I'm look because I'm part of B&I. And so uh, we always tell what we're looking for at the end. And I said, I'm looking for at least four hostesses that want to do a wind down party. And so they're like, what is a wind down party? I said, everybody's going to be winding down next week after Mardi Gras is over because everybody's going to be able to breathe. I said, so I'm doing wind down parties. I said, everybody needs to wind down. I said, so everything's been rush, rush, rush. Now let's just take some time and just really sit down, relax and have some, some fun together, you know, and enjoy each other's company. Because when you go to Mardi Gras, you don't enjoy nobody's company because everybody's crazy. Uh, you know, even some of the uh, guests that were there today, they were like, that is so awesome. A wind down party. Never thought about that. You can take it to so many different levels. It can be a wind down from the uh, the busy, crazy week, you know, and just just to get somebody's attention. But and that that's what one of the parties I'm going to start offering now is a wind down party because everybody seems to like the wine and chocolate parties. So, but anyway. Does anybody else have any tips that y'all want to share about hostess coaching? Something that's working for you? Any questions? No, but those are great ideas. Helps helps that uh, keep that my, that wheel spinning in that head. Like, oh, I got to use that next time. Now, now the problem is going to be is wh which ones are you going to use? Right. And, uh, and not using every single one. So, you know, so you. You're, uh, <laughs> You're overloading your hostess, just like whenever we do cocoa chats and we're throwing up on them. You know, you're overloading the host with all these papers. But no, just to make it fun, you know, and uh, say, okay, one of the things that you can say when you're hostess coaching, if you're using the scavenger hunt and the tic tac toe, is like, you know what? We're partners, and my my job is to make sure you get as much stuff as you can for free. So here's one sheet. Here's another sheet. Take this one to your bathroom mirror. Tape this one to your refrigerator so that you know who to invite and what your next goals are. You know, just make it fun and make make it go and get into her head like, you know what, i got to get this going. So I want to get more stuff for free. So uh, if, you, if you're going to include all those papers. So. Well, if y'all don't have any more input, I guess we can wind it down. Uh, but uh, ha -ha. <laughs> I'm out of wine, so I'm just drinking water tonight. So I'm boring. But uh, but anyway, thanks for getting on. And at uh, Marie, if um, if Pam is not going to participate in the calls, then I will. Uh, me and you'll start pacing together. Okay. Okay. Um, next week. Is it next week? I think it's next week or the week after. I think I have a field trip. I'm not. I gotta check and see which date it is. Um, so I may miss it. I'll let you know when I I get a definite on which day it is. Okay. So. Yeah, next week's gonna be crazy here too. Next Tuesday because it is Mardi Gras. 
So yeah. um, I'm not 100% sure if we're supposed to be going or not, but we usually go with my best friend and all of her uh, family on Tuesday, on Mardi Gras, and we go in to the parades and everything. But um, I'll let y'all know for sure if I will be participating next week. <laughs> Whether or not I'm here, I'll have a video ready to go. But uh, I, um, I really am not trying to miss any of the uh, calls unless, I, like tomorrow, I, I'm probably going to pull over on the side of the road and be driving to Dina's house and do the call with the target team group too. So that's probably how that call will go. So, but anyway, well, I hope that y'all uh, gotten some great tools tonight. And uh, if you haven't sent me your goal sheets yet, make sure you send me your goals. I've gotten a few. Hey. Let's do a text. <laughs> it, it's great to, uh, to get them just so that I know where I can help you and where I can say, okay, what do we have going on? You know, and how, how are you going to get to that goal? And I, I've said that to Dina a couple of times. And I know she was to say, just shut up. But uh, you know, how are you going to do that? But, you know, just uh, I want you to be able to make what you're saying that you, you want to make. Dina, I, I know how much she said yep. she was to make, and good Lord, well, I don't know what we're going to do to get there, but we're going to get there, so <laughs> we're going to win the chocolate lotto. So. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's exactly it. There you go. Okay, y'all. Well, y'all have a great evening, and I'm going to, uh, I want to post these tools today, but if I post them, I wonder if the girls from tomorrow night won't get on. Uh, well, then wait until tomorrow. We we can wait. We're patient people. Yeah, that's true. Well, tease them. Put, put some kind of post out there. I have great tools, but you got to come to the call. Yeah. You know what? I'll just email them to all of y'all right now, and then I'll post them on Team Matt after our uh, next call. Okay. okay. So I'll email them to that's all of y'all. So, okay. Uh, make, right. Can you make it a super I'll secret I'll file? Be, what's that? What'd you say? Dana, what'd you say? Can you make the file super secret? Can you make it super secret? Like it says super secret over there. So they okay. have to get on the call to get get into the super secret file. I'll do that. <laughs> Being silly. I've, I've worked too many hours today. <sighs> we'll go get some rest. Y'all have a great night. And I will uh, talk to y'all soon. All right. Thank you so much. Bye, y'all. All right, ladies. Bye. Bye. Bye.